the level of what you need to do is like you create this theme park project and then you load up the company's website and you ask yourself honestly, like, okay, do you see this portfolio? Does, is it in the same level? You know, ask yourself that, right? Let's say you're doing 3D modeling or concept art, right? And you pull up a piece of forks concept art. Obviously there's going to be a little bit better, right? But then you got to be like, okay, is it feasible or does it look like nothing like it? Hey guys, Chris here. I just got done filming this podcast video thing. His name is Michael from uh, Rochester Institute of Technology. I'm really active on social media and I have a lot of students asking me questions all the time. So I created this video so that other students who have the same questions also see the answers as well. And this way it's a valuable resource to everybody out there on YouTube. Uh, so I wanted to kind of ask, uh, so from transferring from ID to uh, eventually doing concept art, when you were first going to school, was your, end, was your end goal always to do concept art? Or was that something that you kind of found out about as you were like in the major? Did you eventually find out about it? Or was like, like, did you like think that was always going to be your end goal? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, this is a really personal question for me because not everybody's going to be the same. But the end goal was always concept art, um, except I, was, um, I wasn't that confident about being able to do concept art. So I wanted to do industrial design. So I've been studying concept art since like, what, like 2005, 2006. Um, back in like the really early days of like conceptart.org. Um, that's when like the Star Wars movies came out, like Star Wars episode one, and they had those art of Star Wars books. And um, actually I was taking a lot of classes at Art Center College of Design as a high schooler. And that's where I learned a lot of, you know, uh, drawing uh, techniques and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, I had like pretty good grades and I was like, you know, like I want to go to a school where I can still get like uh, academic background. So I went to Carnegie Mellon, um, but I wanted to do concept art. And one of the problems uh, I faced when I got out of Carnegie Mellon, when I wanted to do concept art was like, when I was getting a broad education that has its pros and cons. The pros, right, is that you learn a little bit about everything. I, I almost had a Chinese minor, I had a theater minor. Um, I took a lot of like classes, I had like friends who are like engineers and robotics, business, you know, a lot of stuff. So it was great. But the problem was when I started to apply for jobs in concept art, I realized the people I was applying for a job, well, you know, I was competing against, they were like art center graduates. And basically they've been doing nothing but concept art for the last four years, you know, like taking like full course loads in like art and design and that kind of stuff. And when I was like, uh, I took like two semesters of art in college, like total, <laughs> I was like severely underprepared. It's like, if you show up to like, I don't know, a boxing match or whatever, something like that, I was absolutely outclassed. You know, I had my broad education, which was good, you know, but I was trying to do concept art and I just needed to spend a couple more years, you know, refining my skills and stuff. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up because that is, that's almost my exact situation right now, honestly, because like I love uh, my major and in industrial design. It's really taught me a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have learned otherwise, which is why I eventually, uh, like I actually transferred in from a more artistic major, kind of like I was in animation for a semester. And then after a couple of weeks, I said, okay, this is interesting. I just felt like I wasn't getting so I eventually switched over to ID because I felt like I was going to be learning more. The downside of that is though that like you you learn so much, but like it's very difficult to hone in on a very specific craft that you want to do. So like I've had the same issue, like trying to find certain jobs in like concept art or even just like internships or trying to get certain gigs. It's like I've done some of that stuff. I just I haven't had the chance to like really focus or hone in on it over the past couple of years just because it's like hey, we're going to be building some furniture or we're going to be building a knife, which is super cool. Like, I really mm -hmm. love doing all of that, but it's very much, um, again, you're competing against people that have been doing this and just this for the last four years. And it's like, oh, well, where, where do I start, you know? <laughs> yeah. Do you have any architecture majors at your school? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, we, ha we have interior design. Oh, in okay. Our 
college. And we do have an architecture major in, I think in like, there's the sustainability school, there's like uh -huh. a sustainability school of architecture. Well, um, I think like the architecture kids, uh, they kind of do it where, you know, they're relatively good at like drawing and 3D modeling and drafting. And the way they do it is like, they just don't sleep. So <laughs> there's a way to get good and like professional at like multiple skills at the same time. It's just like getting a double major, right? Like th th those guys who get double majors, they just don't sleep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I know one guy who's doing comm sci and computer security, and I don't know how he does sleep because he's just doing so much all at once. Like it's insane. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Um, yeah. Cause like, you know how to make like furniture and stuff at your school. And then like the problem is that if you want to apply for a job where they want furniture makers, there's probably a guy out of trade school and he's just been making furniture for the last like four years or something like that at, I don't know, furniture, carpenters, college, whatever, trade school. Um, so it's kind of tough because you had like, I don't know, like a couple semesters, one or two classes on furniture making. It, yeah, exactly. Like it's not even really required within our school to even do that. Like they have like, they have it if you want it. They do have a furniture design major specifically for if you just want to make like chairs and yeah. doing that sort of thing. But like if you're an ID, it's like, hey, it's more of like an elective thing. Like, hey, you can do this. Kind of that same thing with like, they have something for like, hey, here's something you can take in like graphic novels or yeah. painting. Or something. But like, not that that's like your main course load. Hey, um, I was going to say something that hindsight that gave me a lot of, uh, I don't know how to say this, but the people who graduated from my school in industrial design, the successful ones, they transition over to um, UI UX. So a lot of them are working for companies like Instagram, Facebook, I don't know, um, not Tinder, but like those like dating, any app companies, you know? Yeah. So it's like, they're not actually, they're using their design skills, but they're making apps now. And that seems to be really lucrative for them because, you know, anything in Silicon Valley is doing pretty good nowadays. Um, furniture companies, you know, not so much, you know, like it's still not bad, but. Like being able to know like the human psychology and like anything with human interaction and human factors seems to be like a big thing, which again is like a great thing with that major. And the main reason that I was like reaching out to you was just because of like, because of your background in concept art and also because it overlapped a lot with like ID. So mm -hmm. Uh, one of my other questions was, it kind of like ties into this, was how um, like being able to like transition from ID to concept art, like I want to try and take more courses and stuff on my own time. It's just very, it's like, I, I don't know if it's feasible for me to do a double major or to like spend another four years in school. Like, do you think that having a background in just like doing stuff online or trying to attend workshops like that would give you the same skill set or would it be like you would you really recommend like trying to go to like a specific art program oh wait uh what type of skills are you trying to learn like uh specifically just um like doing like landscape architecture and in general just like trying to get better at like painting and overall uh like i've been doing some 3d modeling and like fusion and solid works for more like parts and stuff mm -hmm. but just in general include like increasing skills and in, like visual development like as a focus oh shoot uh, i don't know i don't know have you seen my latest youtube video about the the concept art drafting engineering that that type of thing how i broke it down into different skill sets i actually i actually haven't i've seen some of like your podcast oh okay really good yeah, I'll send that to you. Um, it's like uh, how to become an Imagineer, but that's like a clickbait title. Like the 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 real title would be like Appl applicable skill sets if you want to be a theme entertainment major and an overview of the theme entertainment pipeline. <laughs> so that's kind of what I cover in the video. Um, but to answer your question, software, AutoCAD drafting. Yeah, you don't need to go to college for that. You can probably take courses on Linda and you'll probably be fine. You know, Linda, LinkedIn, you know, get some type of certificate in your LinkedIn profile that, oh, you're certified in AutoCAD, blah, blah, blah. 3D modeling, you can probably learn that online. Um, what is that? Concept art. Um, if you wanted to learn concept art, you can probably 
there's so many like CGMA, you know, there's on all these online websites, Schoolism, uh, Brainstorm Academy. Um, yeah, I can send you like some links and stuff afterwards, but um, you can potentially learn, you know, concept art a lot online, uh, you know, 3D modeling, that kind of stuff. And the proof is like, there's a lot of these really successful concept artists out of like just places that uh, don't have art schools like India or Ukraine, Serbia, right? They don't have like a famous art school there, but they just went online, right? And that, that kind of democratized everything where, and then became really, really good just by like going to these forums and art tutorials. And I don't know, there's a thing about like, if someone doesn't hand it to you, they get so much hungrier and so much better. <laughs> um, and when you go to a, a college and they kind of spoon feed you this stuff, it's like, hey, read the book, you know, do the lesson. All right, turn in the homework. For some reason, a lot of those kids, they turn out really good, you know, but um, uh, also there are a lot of students who end up like becoming complacent, you know, and not, they're just doing it for the sake of getting the grade, not because they're really hungry and they want to do it. Um, right. Yeah, I think you can probably supplement your skills doing online tutorials and stuff. It's, it's almost next to free. If you're taking those same courses at a university, you would do good too, except, you know, you're just paying a premium on the price. It's a lot cheaper to get a Linda or Schoolism subscription than it is to get a Rochester Institute of Technology. You know, they're probably putting a huge overhead on the whatever money you're paying them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. Like, as I've been trying to find some resources online, and a lot of stuff has been helpful. Like the the stuff you recommended, honestly, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Like, if you have any specific courses to recommend, like that, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess my biggest thing is just uh, like, I, I know you give a lot of general advice on your podcast and like making it in the industry. Like I would like, I just say like, what would be like your best piece of advice to like someone new to this industry about like trying to break in, like what, like specifically for like concept art, like what they should do. And also just um, uh, like why you love what you do. Oh, um, you know, I was going to say, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of making this video about it. I feel like one of the biggest things you could do to help break into the industry would be to know all like the players and everything. Like, uh, what is something you're passionate about? Like, give me an example. What is something like a game or movie or whatever? Like, like a franchise? Or yeah, something? yeah, whatever. What is something that you, you're interested in? Uh, I would say uh, Indiana Jones. Okay. even just like the not even like the movie but like just the ride the mummy ride at universal like made me love that movie okay cool um i was gonna say this like let's say indiana jones for example could you name all the characters and all the scenes and like that you could could you write out like the entire script of the movie like kind of i probably yeah. probably could right you can name all the characters you can probably say everything happened um, like you can like probably write down 20 characters from Indiana Jones off the top of your head. Some people, they can like name all the NBA players, all the Pokemon, whatever. But what if I asked you, could you list off 20 companies that work on theme parks off the top of your head besides probably. Disney and Universal? I could list like a, maybe, a, I don't know if I could list 20, but I could list like a couple that I've really looked at. Okay. Like, okay. What, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? I'm trying, I'm trying to, oh geez, okay, uh, put me on the spot. Uh. <laughs> like, if I ask you to name, like, five car companies, you can probably do that, right? Yeah, like, like Chevy or... Um, GM, Toyota, Honda, uh, you know, you can kind of, could you name, yeah. like, the equivalent of theme park design firms or engineering firms? Um, I could, but probably not at that same speed. <laughs> <laughs> so, that would probably be, like, the biggest thing to... Um, if you want to get your foot in the door to be able to knock on more doors, you know, like, of course you want to, you know, join the Disney imaginations competition, apply there, you know, apply for that Disney internship. Um, but if you don't get it right, because, you know, it's so popular and there's not a lot of spots, right. It's really competitive. Okay. No worries. You can do universal. You can do SeaWorld. You can do, um, Legoland, which is owned by Merlin. Right. 
but let's say you don't get those. No worries, you know, no panic, right? There's a lot of else. There's a lot of other companies. There's BRC, Hedema, Thinkwell, uh, Goddard Group, which is now GGC, uh, Legacy, G, G, E, uh, Jack Rouse Associates, uh, Sally Dark Rides, Oceaneering, uh, Steve Burkett Engineering. Um, let me see, there's, uh, I think I said Hedema, but yeah, you can see I can like name off all of this stuff. How useful would it be if you knew all of these companies and you'd be like, okay, I want a job. No worries. I have this list of like 40 companies I'll just apply to. That would be a pretty nice resource, right? Like just doing more research. research and yeah. So yeah. there's a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, the first met, I mean, I kind of did it old school. I mean, I could like give you the list, but sometimes when you have to get the list yourself, it, it's so much more valuable. You appreciate it more. So right. one thing is you go to people's resumes, right? And then you look at the companies that worked for in the past and you're like, oh shoot, they worked for this company. But before that, they worked for this company called BRPH Engineering and Architect. What is that? You look into that. And then you look at something like, oh, Meisaker, Meisaker, what is that? You look into Meisaker, right? And you look down, oh, Brock Larson Design. Oh, I haven't heard of that company. I'll look into that company. Wyatt Design Group, what's Wyatt? You know, and then you look at each one of these companies and you realize, like, oh, hey, you know, this stuff is pretty cool. I'll go apply to the company. I'll send them a message. I'll send them my portfolio. And then you do that for every person that you see who is a Dean Entertainment Design Professional. And then you build up this database of like 50 companies you can apply to. And then what's cool is that these companies who might get your email, they're like, oh, shoot, like we rarely get emails from students. Maybe because a lot of these companies, they're like, one to five to maybe 10 people, they're really small. Like even though their portfolio looks huge, right? They're like, whoa, this must be like a 200 person company. You know, they look so amazing. And then when I got there, I was like, shoot, like this is like a small apartment. It's like only 10 people here. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so let's see, uh, stock kind of stock people, you know, and then like, look at the companies they worked for in their resume. It's public information, you know, like don't do anything illegal. Um, let's see what else. Go to like uh, Theme Entertainment Association or IAPA on the website. They'll have like news articles, right? And they'll be like, oh, Forek released a new ride, won a new award. Forek is a company based in Canada. Um, and then you'll be like, okay, what's this Forek company, right? And you write that down. And then there's a, oh, Scruffy Dog, UK, all right? Oh, that's another company, I'll write that down. Um, and, and then you slowly build up this huge, you know, list of companies you can go to. Forex was one of like the biggest ones I was looking at originally. Oh, I love Forex. They're, yeah, I worked for them a couple of times. They're really nice people. Yeah, they seem super like just relaxed and nice. Like I got to meet the uh, head of, Forek actually like a couple years ago when I was down in uh, uh, Universal for like the Ryerson competition in 2019. Yeah, he was super nice, super approachable. He gave everyone on our team like his card. He was just uh, and it, I did more research into the company after meeting him, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they do all this cool stuff. Like like not just in themed entertainment, but like yeah. they do architecture, they do like this, they do toys, they do like sets. It's just like even just outside of like theme park design just like themed entertainment in general like looking for like museums or doing like displays and stuff like even like that stuff is just super interesting like just like user experience and just like the whole environment setting of just like creating these spaces I think is just super interesting yeah it's nice to diversify your portfolio and diversify the work you do like when I was working at the architecture firm I wasn't just doing theme parks um, I was doing like a bar, I did like a museum, you know, like restaurants, because, you know, they're like an architecture firm. Um, so they kind of do a little bit of everything. But this way you're not, because before when I was only doing theme parks, right, you would, the work would be a lot more unstable, because like, you don't always have like a theme park or a theme entertainment thing being built. But if you can fill in the gaps with other stuff, you know, toys, games, movies, whatever, right, then you can stay working longer. Yeah, so like not just like still not like going too broad, but like within your uh, set field, not just like doing one thing, like not just doing all the theme parks, but like also specializing in like games and toys and like making sure you can kind of do it all mainly, right? Oh, oh shoot, yeah. I don't. I guess I don't want to say that. 
I think there's probably、um, two ways to put it. Well, yeah, you, you do want to do other stuff too, but、um, I didn't mean to misinterpret what you were saying. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, that that's cool. That's cool. Let me just think. I was gonna say like. If you specialize in one skill set, like let's say you're just good at like AutoCAD, or you're just good at drafting, or something like that,、um, then you may want to,、uh, you know, also do other industries just just so you stay diversified. But let's say you just want to do theme entertainment, then in theme entertainment, you may want to have other skills,、um, like.、Uh, Concept art, drafting, engineering, you know, three、uh, D modeling. So you stay diversified in the theme entertainment project. You can go all the way from the blue sky concept to making the schematic drawings to making the engineering drawings. So you can stay working, and you're very versatile. So you're either diversified in your skill set, or you're either diversified in the industries you're working in. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's. I didn't mean to make it seem like diversified, as in like, oh, you do like CAD, and you also do drilling, and you also do drawing. But like, kind of what you were saying, where it's like you're diversified enough in your set field that you can like go through the entire process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't be bad at everything. You have to be like good at everything. If like you've only taken like one semester in whatever thing that was, you know, it almost like doesn't count. Like it needs like every skill for it to count. It needs to be like at least mediocre or better. So it's like not just being like, oh, I can make a box in 3D. It's yeah, like, it's no, like have to be able to. That's like、yeah. saying like, hola, cómo estás? I'm fluent in Spanish, you know. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you only know two words. Like you got to be at like conversational level or better at least for、right. it to be. Yeah, like I've taken three years of Spanish in high school, didn't retain much. Like, <laughs> <laughs> <speak> a little. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well.、Um, I think that's pretty much all I have here.、Uh, I didn't want to take up like too much in terms of like because I know you're very busy and everything. But、um, unless you have any like additional advice or comments or anything,、uh, feel free to just say whatever's on your mind.、Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free to send me your portfolio. I'll be happy to take a look at it、uh, and stuff.、Um, uh, yeah. For sure. Uh, yeah. Right now, if I'm being honest, a lot of it is more industrial design based,、uh-huh. which is more so like products and everything. Like, I, I've done some the the theme park stuff that I have done. I don't know if I really can show because a lot of it is done. Like, I've worked on competitions in the oh, past. Oh, cool! Which is like Ryerson, and we actually yeah we just finished up everything with Ryerson like a couple weeks ago, and. Doing everything with Cornell. I don't know if I can like the Cornell one that they do、uh, in the spring, but like I don't know if I can show a ton of that just for like NDA reasons. But、um, actually, I was like thinking of like if I had more time over the summer, I definitely would have taken one of your classes that you offered in terms of like concept art or something. So、uh, yeah, if you want to see my portfolio right now, it's just、uh, my name,、uh, MikeMcNaught.com, which、okay. it needs to get overhauled a lot right now just because.、Um, Like I have my ID section, which needs to get updated, and then there's a whole like extra section where I have like, hey, here's some additional CAD I've done, and like some sketches and just like graphic stuff for like not necessarily ID related things, but just like projects that I've worked on in the past. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Put some theme park. Make sure you're <laughs> you have some non NDA stuff in your portfolio. That's a huge、uh, issue for a lot of people, you know, where it's like they the only work they have to show is. Ah,、uh, yeah. You know what? I have one more thing. It's it's really weird for concept artists.、Um, they're always working on personal projects. You know, they're always working on projects that they can do. For theme park people, it's like it's really rare for them to work on personal projects that aren't NDA. So、um, I recommend having something you can put in your portfolio that doesn't have to be always top secret. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good piece of advice.、Uh, Because my goal was like last summer, like hey, to do like a bunch of theme park stuff, and then, like, I got a bunch of commissions for other projects, and I just、That's、was、cool. like, which was like good experience. It just was like kind of getting distracted from that. So, my goal for this summer is to try and like actually work on like a set project. I don't know. Yeah, and like after you look up those you know companies that I told you about, right? The level of what you need to do is like you create this theme park project, and then you load up the company's website. 
and you ask yourself honestly, like, okay, do you see this portfolio? Does, is it in the same level? You know, ask yourself that, right? Let's say you're doing 3D modeling or concept art, right? And you pull up a piece of Forex concept art and you'll be like, okay, honestly, it, do they look like they could have been done by the same person? Obviously there's gonna be a little bit better, right? But then you gotta be like, okay, is it feasible or does it look like nothing like it? And then do the same thing for AutoCAD or master planning or, you know, whatever. You know, this way you have a benchmark of the quality you need to produce. That sounds really good. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right. I think we're good. All right. Sounds great. Uh, you, thanks again for, for oh, what? I'm sorry. Are you okay with putting this on YouTube? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, cool. I'll link your website below. Uh, if you want, do you want me to link it in the uh, description? Yeah, sure. If you want, that would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Okay. All right. I'll see you later, Michael. All right. Thanks a ton. Have a great day. No problem. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for watching the video. Uh, thanks for watching all the way through to the end. Uh, you're one of the loyal fans. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for the video uh, in the comments below. Uh, maybe you can type in what was your favorite part. You know, let us know. And also, if you have any questions or topics for future videos, feel free to put it there as well. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a good day.